Hello, it's Benji, and welcome to the Dice vs. Cards. Today, we're looking at Gone Sean Clever, a one to four player competitive roll and write game where you're uh, rolling dice, ampersand, writing crosses and numbers on a piece of paper to gain the most points possible. So, as players, you're thrust into the cutthroat environment of a clever competition for, you guessed it, clever people. And the winner takes home 253,837 pats on the back. Honestly. So, let's see how this plays and whether this could be the next game for you. So the object of the game is to be the player with the most points at the end of a set number of rounds dependent on the player count. Each player on their turn is going to be referred to as the active player and all other players are the passive players who get to do something at the end of the active player's turn. So the active player, as you'd expect, is going to start their turn by rolling all six dice and then picking one of those dice and placing it on their relevant space on the scoring pad and then marking either a cross or a number on the relevant space and we'll come to that in more detail in a moment. However, there is a catch because any dice that you rolled with a lower numbered facing than the one that you picked get placed onto the silver platter for use by the passive players at the end of your turn. You then rinse and repeat that process by rolling the remaining dice, picking one of those dice, marking where relevant and placing dice on the silver platter until you've picked three dice. So every time the active player picks a dice, they're going to mark off the relevant space on their pad. And we'll go into those in a bit more detail now. So the yellow dice, you're literally just going to be marking off whatever number was found when you rolled it. And each time you then complete a column, you're going to get more points and completed rows are going to give you bonuses. Then the blue dice, which is slightly different because it's always paired with whatever number is on the white dice. So you'll always compare the, add these two numbers and mark off the relevant space. And the more spaces you mark off, the more points you get. Similarly, completed rows and columns are going to give you bonuses. Then the green, orange and purple dice all follow a similar premise in that you have to mark spaces from left to right in that respective rows. So the green dice has a requirement that you have to get a certain number greater than or equal to. So here is starts with one and it gets progressively harder and then starts again. The orange dice, you're looking to input the highest numbered orange dice you can. And you'll also see there are multipliers in certain spaces. And finally, the purple dice are asking you to make sure you always have a greater number in the space to its right. And as soon as you get to six, you then get to restart. So we haven't talked about the white dice. Now the white dice are paired with the blue dice, but also act if you choose them as a wild dice. So you can then choose that to be inputted in it as any color. So once the active player has finished their turn, then all passive players get to simultaneously use one of the dice that was placed on the silver platter and mark the relevant space on their pads. Then the active player will pass to the player to the left. So at the start of each active players round, they're going to get access to certain actions like re-rolling all of their dice or even selecting additional dice at their end of their turn. Now we mentioned bonuses earlier, so a couple of examples of those are if you complete this row here in the yellow dice section, you're going to be able to immediately cross off the next space in the green row. And here, if you mark off this space in the green row, you're going to be able to put a number six in the purple row, in the next space in the purple row. So play rinses and repeats like that, going round and round until the relevant round has ended and all active players have had a go on that turn. And then you're then going to total up the number of points you've got from each section and the player with the most points is the winner. So that's a rough overview of this game. Let's see what I thought of it. So who is this for? Well, it's a light to medium weight game, but really for a roll and write, it's up there in terms of complexity. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of different ways this game can go for you. And you know what this game reminds me of? Futuristic space bingo. 
Yes, I said those three words in a sentence, but this is the sort of thing you'd see, a pen and paper version of something you'd see on Star Trek, for example. So bingo fans, lend me your ears and eyes, and let's see if this game can seduce you. So you might want to consider this if you liked Quix, published by GameRight, or Istanbul, the dice game, published by Pegasus Spiel. So in terms of gameplay, well I suspect that all good games come at first with a great concept. And this is how I suspect the pitch meeting went for this game. So I want to take six different coloured dice, two of them, let's say, are identical twins, the blue and the white dice, and they're going to act as superheroes. And the idea as players is that you massage their ego, upgrade their skills, and they're going to give you more and more points in return. That sounds absolutely fine. Let's remove all that fantastical nonsense and just stick to the bare bones fundamentals. Sure. And they did, and they executed it very well. Both in the rolling of the dice, that game of risk reward you've got on each of your turns, deciding how many dice you can do away with just to get the dice you want, really is the tactical choice on offer here. And then and the application of writing it down on the pad, seeing where the most points are available, everything here sings quite well. A minor nitpick, oh, it's not really a nitpick. Some things in games I'm perfectly happy with, but I just feel like they could have been developed a bit more. And that's in, I find here, in the actions. Rerolling dice and picking an additional dice work absolutely fine and they can be extremely crucial for you to unlock a particular game plan but I just feel like there could have been some more development here some more options on offer so in terms of pacing it's absolutely fine I like to play this as a two-player game but it's completely saved in terms of player engagement by having passive players on every turn so if it's not your turn you're ultimately going to have something to do so if not the more players you've got the more downtime there's going to be so really that's kind of a new i have a neutral position on pacing there's a really good solo variant yes it's probably mechanically slightly inferior to the multiplayer version but oh my god it is highly highly addictive this reminds me of having one more game of tetris i will get a higher score next time so the amount of choices you have on offer i'm the sort of player that tends to get a bit more epic tends to get a bit single-minded in the way i play certain games but this doesn't allow you to do that there's only so much you're going to be able to do with the dice you want without sacrificing all the other choices you have so almost every game you play is going to branch you off into different directions and that really is so liberating and just makes for a highly highly replayable game so one more nitpick, the translation. Actually, learning the fundamentals here, to be fair, is fine. Getting you to the table, the rules do a great job. But you know where every game has those sorts of idiosyncrasies of, oh, what happens if this happens? That's where the rule book fails in its translation. Now, a quick search of Google tells you that most probably the original German language rules were absolutely spot on. But this is always a big bugbear of mine. So in terms of the look and feel and theme of the game, well, it's actually an attractive product and the colour on the, and vibrancy on all of the pads is really well produced. Yes, the dice look, they were probably made in the 70s, but functionally they're absolutely fine. It's a themeless game, but it's not what you're looking to get. You just want pure gameplay here. So with all that being said, Dice vs Cards are going to give a final score of 8 out of 10. This really is a roll and write that's going to stand the test of time. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time. Clever means being handy, dexterous, and having special manual ability. God damn, that's not me then, is it?